political groups, um, you're really infringing on some of those different, very uh, passionate belief systems that they have, and that could be cause and reason if it is uh, on the domestic side of terrorism. And then on the other side, let's not forget, again, 9-11, we had terrorists living among us, terrorist cell in and around Boston, and so that's got to be obviously looked at as well. Part of the foreign aspect of foreign terrorism is also is obviously the sympathizers, the Al-Qaeda-like sympathizers, in some of those different aspects, and again, utilizing anniversaries, utilizing significant iconic days like Patriot Day. So clearly a lot of work for the investigators on this case. This is going to be unfolding for a while. All right, Todd McGee with the, the bomb attacks at the Boston Marathon Monday afternoon are all over the mainstream media. What eyewitnesses described it as a war scenario of unspeakable horror is already being reported by most media outlets as an act of terrorism. What also seems to be the official position of the White House, despite the lack of suspects according to Boston authorities. Latest reports give account of the presence of heavy-geared army soldiers getting in and out of local hospitals. There has been some speculation about one or more persons of interest, but with no further details. Whilst the American people is spoon-fed by the Zionist media and brainwashed into believing these bomb attacks were perpetrated by fundamentalist radicals of Islam, conspiracy theory forums all over the internet are flooded with threads discussing whether this tragedy was another inside job sanctioned by the U.S. government in order to carry out some secret agenda. Though the lack of more information prevents a deeper scrutiny of what happened in Boston, the testimony of an eyewitness seems to strengthen the hypothesis of a false flag event. A cross-country coach at University of Mobile told the local news that early in the morning of the marathon there was a bomb squad apparatus in that area, allegedly conducting a training exercise. The coach also reported an unusual security apparatus of law enforcement spotters on the nearest roofs when the race got started, what strongly suggests the local authorities were in the loop about something that was about to happen. The question now is, if indeed they knew about the bombs, or were aware of any threats, why they just didn't cancel the marathon and evacuated the area. Several runners from our area are in Boston. They were running in the marathon. Several we talked with were not far from the explosions when they happened today. Yeah, local 15's John Zanitas is live in our newsroom right now. John, the University of Mobile cross-country coach actually saw the explosion happen. That's right, Kim. He had just finished the marathon and was walking back to the finish line to meet up with his wife. That's when the explosions started going off. His wife had been sitting in the section where one of the explosions went off, but thankfully she had left her seat to come meet up with him. He says there was just this thick, blinding cloud of white smoke. They all started running. The coach told me, though, this is interesting, before the marathon, he saw bomb-sniffing dogs and bomb spotters on the roofs at the starting line, and it appeared to him there was some sort of active threat before the explosions went off at the start line this morning they had um bomb spotters on the roof of the building and they had bomb sniffing dogs coming up and down at the start line and melanie said there was bomb sniffing dogs at the finish line but they kept making announcements saying to the participants do not worry this is just a training exercise well evidently i don't believe they were just having a training exercise i think they must have known they must have had some kind of threat or suspicion called in now, Coach Stevenson told me he's run plenty of marathons in D.C. and Chicago, other major metropolitan areas, but he's never seen that many bomb-sniffing dogs for a race. But for right now, reporting live in the newsroom, John Zanitas, Local 15 News. John, thank you. Just a horrible ordeal. A controlled explosion exercise of the Boston Bomb Squad also was reported in the Twitter page of the Boston Globe newspaper in the same day of the marathon. What gives a large room for many sensitive questions? Were these exercises a plausible deniability, so that explosive devices could be placed in specific points of that area? If actual terrorist threats were made before the marathon, 
why the local authorities simply did not evacuate the area and cancelled the event. How come the sniffing dogs did not detect the bombs? Regardless the official version delivered by the authorities, the US government and mainstream media, this attack has inside job false flag event written with neon letters all over it. The question now is what is the agenda behind it, and what comes next?